Hello YouTube, Validation Boy here. So, I was scavenging through YouTube for some entertainment and I came across the Tom Scott channel. Now, this channel is just like Vsauce or any number of other channels designed to do nothing but reinforce the lies and the hype of our beloved system. These channels are aimed at the young and have all the bells and whistles it takes to distract a naive mind from the fact that everything they're being fed is complete and utter cognitive dissonance and is also some of the most self-contradicting garbage they will ever see. Anyways, after scrolling through this Lamos vids and even watching a bunch of them, I saw a thumbnail for a video concerning Voyager 1 and I just had to check it out. I had this strong feeling that I might have just found a treasure trove of government funded big science insanity and damn was I right. I've linked the original video below, but I've included screenshots of some of the content within that video which I felt was pertinent to this research, including this shot from inside a NASA control room where Disney's Magic Kingdom is apparently one of their main priorities. The video starts off on the premise that Voyager 1 is actually moving closer to the Earth. This is where the cognitive dissonance starts, right out of the gate. In reality, if we were to assume the unprovable conjecture that space can be traveled through or that it even exists in the way big science claims, then we are also expected to believe that because the Earth and the Sun are quote catching up to Voyager 1, then the Earth spends half of the year moving towards Voyager 1 and spends the other half moving away from it. So in fact, it would actually be the Earth and the Sun who are traveling towards Voyager 1 and not the other way around. But hey, that's just small fries. Let's not forget the fact that for the Earth to be moving towards a distant Voyager 1 in space, or towards any object for that matter, we would also have to accept the ridiculous notion that the Earth spends half of its year overtaking the Sun in speed. Now if you really think about things for just a moment, and you consider the other lies we've been fed concerning space, you would be forced to take into account the idea that our solar system is supposed to be hurtling around an alleged galactic center. For our sun and planets to stay conjoined to one another by the unprovable myth of gravity and maintain their current orbital structure, something more like this would have to be occurring. NASA says they are tracking Voyager 1 along an alleged orbital plane despite the fact that there cannot exist such a plane due to the sun and planets all traveling around the galactic center at unfathomable speeds. Ever so conveniently, they also state that they are unable to track probes that travel over the Earth's poles, yes, both poles, because the solar system operates as a flat plane. Can you see the glaring cognitive dissonance yet? So just to clarify, they can't show us the Earth's north and south poles because they choose not to. Now, some might find themselves asking, why haven't they ever, after all these decades, sent a satellite out over the north or south poles? There's a high probability that the only logical answer to this question lies right here. This is called the azimuthal equidistant projection, and it is to date the most accurate map of the Earth which has ever been produced. Notice the lack of a south pole. Of course, this map is claimed to suffer from a few minor flaws which are at the moment unreconcilable, but in reality, these flaws are only still up for debate due to the fact that big science and their unproven conjectures concerning the sky and the celestial objects are all assumed to be correct. As we know, of course, there are zero actual photographs of the entire sphere Earth from space, and as far as we know, no human being has ever left what we call our atmosphere, touched any of the celestial objects, or touched even the barrier at which space allegedly begins. System worshipping stooges under the spell of interstellar Star Wars fantasy will of course vouch for the government's claims to the contrary, but people such as this are typically entirely devoid of critical thinking skills and live in a perpetual state of ignorance. They will never concede to the fact that the very government who provides them with these morsels of sci-fi doublespeak are also the very same governments that brought them the 9-11, Boston bombing, Sandy Hook, and moon landing hoaxes. Proven hoaxes. All of them, might I add. Moving on, NASA claims they are receiving signals from Voyager 1 almost every day. So I decided to go take a look at how radio signals actually operate in space. According to mainstream science, the radio signals NASA is working with are traveling at the speed of light within the supposedly infinite vacuum of space. This is interesting because on one hand, big science says space is, for the most part, completely devoid of matter. Yet on the other hand, they say that at a certain point away from our sun, something called the interstellar medium begins. They say this interstellar medium is full of space dust and particles. Particles which would drastically alter the travel patterns of the radio signals they are claiming to receive. Researching further, I found out that the radio signals they are using are more of a medium along which data can be sent, 
So it looks as though we have one medium working inside of another medium, and magically these two mediums are incapable of affecting each other in any way. So, NASA, are there particles in space or not? Is space even space at all? Good luck getting NASA and our double-speaking terrorist government to ever fully answer either of these questions. Aside from all this, they also claim they update Voyager 1's software constantly. I'd just love to see the computer from 1977 that's able to receive remote software updates via radio waves from the computers of 2017 and is also able to do this through millions of miles of non-space space, all the while not being affected by the fact that the Earth would be facing away from its intended target for at least 12 out of every 24 hours. Pure magic, I guess. So NASA, with all this space dust out there, do friction and resistance actually have any effect on the signals being sent out by all these super badass computers you've apparently been holding back from mainstream society for the last 40 years? Thanks so much for that, Disney. I mean, NASA. Hmm, maybe that's why NASA and Disney each have headquarters in both California and Florida. Huh. Together forever, I guess, for those two lovebirds. Looking deeper, I decided to try finding out how a rocket would even be capable of propelling an object through a vacuum. Ever heard of the whole notion that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction? Rockets use oxygen and other atmospheric elements to push against, but in space none of these elements supposedly exist. They of course try to claim that they use nuclear energy to power the Voyager 1 and its motion. They say Voyager 1 is powered with energy contained in multiple compacted balls of plutonium-238 and that this plutonium will eventually run out. The idea is that this radioactive material decays, and that the heat that this decay discharges is used to shift the probe's attitude and direction. That's funny, however, because we never saw images of NASA loading up the Voyager 1 probe with uh, hundreds of pounds of super deadly radioactive material, nor have we seen them put that material on a rig and wheel it out to an open-air launch pad. And also, do they really expect us to believe that they shot this stuff through the intensely hot journey it takes for objects to escape our atmosphere and that it was entirely unaffected? Give me a break, guys. Let me guess, the super radioactive material the Voyager 1 uses is also magically kept separate from all of the other equipment on this CGI tin can, right? And that's why none of the other parts of the probe have ever malfunctioned badly enough to cease operations. I guess something like that could be possible though, seeing as how the material used to build this thing are magically able to withstand the extreme freeze of deep space with no problems whatsoever for going on what is 40 years now. One thing I can take solace in, however, is the fact that neither Wikipedia, this guy's video, nor any other source have ever been able to sufficiently explain space probe propulsion in a vacuum. And think about the wild trajectories we're supposed to believe these things follow. Come on. In the end, it's crystal clear to me that the Voyager 1 probe is nothing but Disney TV magic. That's what NASA is, though. Just plain lies. That's all they've ever been. As always, much love, much respect. And thanks for watching.